Hi everybody, my name is Leslie Farmer. I'm with KLC Financial. We are located in Minnetonka, Minnesota, and we specialize in equipment financing and leasing. Um, so a couple things that I wanted to bullet point for you is number one, when you're opening a new business or your existing business, the best recommendation I can give to you is to have a solid bank partner. Um, there's a lot of great banking institutions in the Twin Cities that specialize in SBA financing and lines of credit, really just good solid bankers that I think is the number one thing that every bank, every new company should have. Uh, the second bullet point today is um, a capital asset should be acquired with financing or leasing. Save your working capital for other needs, marketing expenses, bringing on a new salesperson, advertising. There's lots of things that come up that you're not really thinking of when you're starting a new business. So utilize other sources when you're looking to buy equipment. Um, working capital is, oh, looks like a word got cut off. Working capital is your best asset. Um, cash is king. It always has been through the recession. We've experienced companies that have money set aside, good banking relationships um, set up. Those are the companies that did not fail through the recession we just went through. So having your working capital established is, is always number one. And then um, number four is obviously KLC can help you with all three of those um, above bullet points. And that's what I'm here today to talk to you about is our company and how we have um, established ourselves in the market and are able to help companies set up, get their equipment in place and, and continue to grow. So KLC has been in business since 1987. Like I mentioned, we're located in Minnetonka, Minnesota. We are a nationwide company. We have a footprint in the five state area. Um, that's our main focus, but we do do financing all over the country. We um, look at deal sizes anywhere from $3,000 up to $3 million. And that's one um, avenue that we partner with banks on is typically a bank isn't super excited about looking at a $3,000 or a $30,000 deal just because it takes a lot of time, effort, um, and resources to put that same transaction together as a $3 million deal. So they will refer it over to us for us to come in and help put the financing together, work with the customer, continue that banking relationship with their main bank, but having an, a, a basic partner to outsource that, those smaller deals to. We look at all types of businesses. Um, we look, do everything from construction, manufacturing, medical, which I have a slide on here that'll go through all the different industries. But We've done transactions, if, you've, if you read the paper, there's an article in there that we talked about. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Sky Zone, which is an indoor trampoline facility located here in town. They have um, franchises all over the country. But Sky Zone came to us through a bank partner and the um, asset is trampoline springs and pads. And, and I can tell you, if any bankers in the room, they'll tell you they're not super excited about that type of collateral. Mm -hmm. And in order for the customer to get up and running, we came in and provided them with the financing. The bank did the real estate piece and we came in and did the equipment. The credit was good, the collateral wasn't. We could get more comfortable with it than a traditional bank. Um, all types of equipment. So we do software, we do hardware, we'll do the chairs in this room, the carpet, the build out, the lights, the ventilation, everything all the way to a yellow piece of iron. We don't specialize in one typical industry and we don't look at one typical credit mold. So we, um, are brought in on a lot of deals because the company doesn't cash flow, personal credit went through some challenges in the past, and so we can get more comfortable with a credit if the collateral's there and vice versa. So we're not regulated like a traditional bank, so we can get really creative on how we put together financing. And a lot of people don't even understand that there is an avenue for that. If they've gone through bankruptcies or tax liens or judgments or you know had some challenges in the past, we can overcome those, those challenges. Um, we really market ourselves as a boutique finance company. So we really are able to provide financing for any different type of company and credit, whereas we don't have a, sp a specific ABC program. It's, we really structure and customize every single transaction separately. I've been with the company for 10 years, I'm not planning to go anywhere. So if there's any opportunities you think of or know of anybody, I'd, I'd love to uh, talk with them and discuss them with you. Um, we set up several different types of lease transactions. So some of you might be familiar with an operator in a capital lease, um, in, in layman's terms, a dollar out lease or a fair market value residual transaction. It really comes down to how you want to account for the transaction. If you want to um, keep it off your balance sheet and be able to expense the payment, that's basically the number one selling point of a lease. You can expense that payment, keep the equipment off of your balance sheet, have that write-off and essentially not pay tax on it. Um, operating lease, so we, do, we can also structure different buyout options on the, on the end. 
really keeps your payment lower on the front end with a residual buyout. So a 10% option is pretty common, but we can also do 15, 20, 25, however you want to um, structure it. And like I mentioned, fair market value lease, you'll have a smaller payment on the front end, a big residual on the back end, but it really keeps your cash flow down as you're starting out the lease. Um, we do a lot of seasonal payments and skip payments for the landscaping industry, the agriculture industry, the construction industry. So, you know, higher payments when business is booming and slower payments during the winter months. Our typical term is 12 to 60 months, um, although we can do a shorter lease if, if you're interested in that. And then again, number one rule, capital assets should always be acquired with financing or leasing instead of using your own cash out of pocket or borrowing money from a friend to um, set it up. It's better to establish credit on your own. Some different benefits of leasing, um, conserving your capital for unseen expenses. So there was a lot of different things that went on in the last few years in the market and I, maybe some people saw it coming, maybe some people didn't. But having that capital in their business, again, is what kept businesses in, in um, tact and not going down the tubes. Um, leasing provides improved cash flow. Typically, we're looking at 100% financing when we're putting out um, capital for equipment. So not the 20% down, we're not looking for your house, your cabin, your firstborn child. We're typically looking at just the equipment that we are financing. Um, it looks at we're also preserving your business and your personal credit. So we don't report to the credit bureaus unless it goes into default, but we establish a credit with you that if you have um, future needs, we're, we're looking at your, your past performance with us and that's how we are typically allowing to give out more cash. Um, upgrading equipment. So a lot of software, a lot of websites, a lot of um, things like that have constant upgrades that need to be done. We have a clause in any of our leases that you can upgrade at any time with that um, equipment. It really helps when you're trying to keep on um, tabs with everything that's changing in the marketplace. And then bundling equipment, software, installation, training, maintenance, all of that stuff is something that you typically aren't thinking about when you're looking at upgrading your website or putting in new software. But there's all sorts of little things that show up on the invoice that need to be paid for and we help with um, those as well. Again, these are the types of industries that we, we concentrate on. I would say there's all sorts of other industries that show up. Um, one that's not on this list that we do a lot of is restaurant financing. And again, if you ask a banker if you would, they would be interested in financing a startup restaurant, I'm pretty sure someone in the room could probably say that's absolutely the least favorable industry to, to look at. We have actually closed on, in the last two months, I think there's 12 restaurants that we financed. Um, most of them are 100% financing. Most of them are the kitchen equipment, which I can tell you when you get the kitchen equipment back, you're going to get pennies on the dollar for what we've put out. A lot of them are established um, restaurant owners that have been in this before and are starting a new concept. So again, they know the, cre the credit's good, collateral's weak, so we'll take more of a risk on that. Um, so a couple things I just wanted to ask. Is anybody in here just not even started up a business yet? Okay, and, and when you're going out to get financing, I mean, are you going to banks to try to find traditional financing? Are you, are you looking to buy any equipment at the moment that you're hearing no or having any challenges with? I haven't quite gotten there. I know I need equipment and stuff, so okay. I'm just not that point yet. Okay, so uh, again, first thing I'd encourage you to do is talk to a bank. Find a really strong bank partner. Um, and and I, what part of what we do is we, set, we can work with you on your business plan. We can work with you in trying to find the perfect bank that's going to fit your needs. Um, I can tell you there's great bankers at Wells Fargo and there's great bankers at Beacon Bank down the street. I mean, there's a, a wide variety of banks that, that uh, we strongly would recommend. So if you need that, I'd be more than happy to help. Um, if you're looking at finding the perfect vendor that's going to get you the best deal, I, we have a database full of a million bank or vendors that we've worked with that um, I would say go to them, don't go to them, just from our past experience. So I'd be more than happy to help any of you out with that. Um, and then, um, again, just the, the couple highlights I just like to talk about. Keeping your cash in your pocket is the best, which is something that we can help with. So one of the products that we do a lot with is a sale leaseback or a refi. So if you're an existing business and you have capital equipment that either you have a loan or a lease on currently, and the rate's too high or you need to get some cash out of that asset, we do a lot of sale leaseback transactions where we'll come in, essentially buy or lien the asset and extend to you typically up to 75 or 80% of the value back to you 
over up to a five-year term. So it's another way to get cash out of something you already have in place. So if you've bought a business or are looking to acquire and they have assets, we can look to get the money out of that. Or if you're already in a business and you have equipment, we can help you out with that. Yeah? Do we do Sharia compliant loans or financing? Do we do Sharia compliant loans or financing? I'm not familiar with that. OK, sounds good. I'd love to learn, though. Um, does anybody else have any questions for me? I should have said, you can definitely ask it. Yeah, Pat. Could you tell, tell a little bit more of the story of the, of the, uh, the trampoline company that you worked with? Yeah. Because they kind of, if I remember when we first talked about this, yep. they thought they were smooth sailing and everything was going to be hunky-dory, and all of a sudden it almost blew up on their faces. So I think that, there, well, yeah, that, and there's a lot of businesses that if you have good, strong personal credit and you're going in to get um, traditional bank financing, you'll find out really quickly that there's, there's a lot of ways banks structure deals, and they do a great job. Um, if you don't have enough equity in your house or your cabin or you don't have the, mo the cash in the bank that they want to see, it's, it's challenging for them because they have, they're regulated, they have restrictions, they have things they have to meet on their end. So this, this trampoline facility, they have really strong personal credit. Um, the owner was a franchise owner of a previous industry in the past, and so he had some money in the bank. Um, when it came to us, we got referred in because the bank wanted first lien on his house, first lien on his cabin. Um, they wanted a 25%, I think, of a down payment, and they wanted him to come up with a $100,000 CD in the bank. And if you're starting a business, you would know not everybody has that kind of excess capital or excess equity or excess anything. And so it just made it challenging. So they went down the road with the bank, and it came to a point where the bank said, guess what, we can only do X and you need Y and Z. I'm not sure how you're going to get it, but we can't do that. So they brought us in and um, we did 100% financing, again, on springs, pads, and trampolines that if I get them back, I'm going to have a really sweet backyard, but I'm not going to ever get any money out. So we, um, but we were able to get creative with them and essentially came behind the bank, took a second on the real estate, but no money out of pocket for the customer. We financed $800,000 of this equipment that, knock on wood, we're down to two payments left. So everything worked out well. They have a booming industry and are making a lot of money. It's a, if you have kids, I, I encourage you to take them there. But um, that was a situation where the, the customer wouldn't have been able to open the doors without the bank referring us in to help them out. And, and that's what we do. I mean, we're, we are, I would think, the number one um, call when a bank has a situation like that where they are there's a gap in the funding or there's a they basically say no I always encourage them to like refer me the deals that you guys can't get done because we're able to to come in and provide the financing for the customer so does anybody else have any questions on equipment financing I guess I just like to leave you with um, the, those those bullet points is just to find a strong bank find a good partner um, We'd, we'd be interested in talking to you about any opportunity, and hopefully we can be there to help you grow your business. Lease versus buy. Is it, you gave some examples where the bank said pretty much no or not likely, yep. and so you sort of recover, help them recover from that. But sometimes the bank is going to say yes. Yep, absolutely. And how do you make that decision, help people make that decision of should I lease or should I buy? Yep, so our rates are very competitive with a, with a community bank. Um, so it's not necessarily we're coming in with a higher interest rate product, but we typically are coming in with a zero cash up front, and um, we don't typically ask for additional collateral where sometimes when you're, when you're working with a bank, they do. So if you want to work with a bank, I would say absolutely try them first, and then they will, they'll hopefully refer you to us. But the difference is really coming down to what are the requirements you need to, to get the traditional bank financing is the is it you know weigh out your options and see which option works better for you I would say they're they're both great products but one might require less money down 100% financing the rate might be a little bit different or, or offset a little bit but at the end of the day what's the best product for you good well thank you for your time and I have some um, Brochures in my carter in the back and, and I'll stick around afterwards. I'd love to talk with you.